Hello awesome people, what is going on? It is Brad Fusion here and welcome back to more Space and Nears Ascension. So where we left off in the last episode, I made a boo-boo and I fell off my ship and actually had to kill myself to get back here to the Phoenix. So yes, I made a mistake and I got out of the ship we just retrieved, which is the longsword that you see parked over here rather nicely. Upon getting out of the ship, I kind of slipped off the edge and I died. So now that we are back here, I just want to talk to you guys about a few things first. Now I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that the Stargates kind of don't really work. I mean, they kind of do, but they don't at the same time. It's very sketchy. But on the good news, when they do work, there's something cool that I've noticed that I've never actually noticed before. So let's go back inside the Phoenix here. So I've made a few changes and whatnot. Obviously the gate in there is still the same. However, I have now added myself a button panel. This is kind of pointless as I have this over here, but this does allow me to access a few more functions that I wouldn't be able to normally access via this over here. So now when I dial a gate, I don't actually need to press the red button anymore. I mean, I could just press T on this anywhere and it will actually dial up to the address I'm locked into. Right now, I think it is on the arcs, but let me lock in the primeters first real quick here. So there we go, Primetus is now uh, dialed in as our address. Now what I can do is I can obviously again press T on this and that will dial through the gate and take me to your Primetus as, as I would normally do. Now over here we've actually assigned a few new commands. So if I press K on this, you guys can see I have two things down here. We have the open and close on the DHD which will actually dial and close down the gate at our will just by clicking the button here. And you have this here that actually uses the conveyor system of the gate. Surprise, surprise. So if I right now press this button here, we have Stargate sounds. That is so cool. So if you're playing survival and you don't have Stargate sounds, you actually need to do a certain thing, which I will explain in a second because it is also needed for something else entirely. So let me close down the gate here again via the button and you guys can see that the gate is now closed. So let's press the turn on conveyor system button for the Stargate. Oh yeah, we got a shield. This is so cool. Uh, so this is like the Atlantis' gate version of the SG-1 or the Stargate Iris, basically. Uh, so this is actually pretty cool. The only thing I don't like is that it kind of damages the ground here. So I won't be using it too often or at all, really. But it does stop you from teleporting through the gate when the gate is actually open like such. So if I walk around here, it shouldn't actually teleport me now, which is rather nice. So I can actually park, say, uh, Kino in here or even Kara, though Kara can't really fit. But I can park Kino in here and don't really have to worry about him getting affected by the gate until I remove the gate's, uh, gate shield, basically. Which I think is pretty damn cool. But I just thought I would want to show you guys that real quickly before continuing on with the series. Now, again, as I was saying, the Stargates right now are rather sketchy. Whilst this one actually does dial home, occasionally when I dial back to the ship, it says incoming wormhole. Now, I've been talking with a few people to get this fixed, or how to kind of work around it. And some of the solutions work, sometimes they don't work, and it's just a whole bunch of sketchiness, basically. So what I'm thinking of doing in this episode is because... Uh, well, obviously I'm going to retrieve the Salt Raven, which is parked out there uh, as we flew back the Longsword. But what I wanted to do is I want to go back to the mining outpost that we actually marked out, Outpost Alpha. Now, this shouldn't be too far behind us, if I'm correct. It's about... Actually, that is quite a distance. Wow, I didn't realize we flew that far. Hang on, is that... Really? That can't be right. Have we almost flown double the distance since we were at the... Oh no, sorry, uh, Arx is overlaying uh, Primetus. I was thinking Primetus was, one, uh, was only 100,000 uh, 100, meters, uh, yeah, 100 kilometers away basically. Um, no, so we can fly back, it shouldn't take us too long, obviously I'll fast forward the majority of that. Because I want to install a gate over there. When the gates were kind of working on and off, I did grab myself uh, the majority, uh, not the majority, but uh, quite a few resources from the base through the gates. So we can now actually build a Stargate if we so desire. At least I think we have the potential to build, build ourselves another Stargate. So this will be our first Stargate that we've built actually. No, sorry, second one. Obviously because the one on here is the first one that we've built. So yeah, I'm going to fly back. Let me get the Assault Raven over here first. Let me kind of go into here. Grab the Assault Raven or the Raven itself. And uh, let's kind of just bring this thing back. Now, this thing does have a camera, it was one that I ins oh no, it wasn't the one that I installed, was it? It was uh, another camera altogether, so I might have to fly this thing just kind of backwards. Oh no, that is the right way up, is it? I can't really tell. 
Yeah, it is. Okay. It's 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 reverse. I have to remember that. <laughs> it's in reverse. So I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is upside down as well. If I go back to my normal view and have a look at the salt raven coming in, is that upside down? Uh, no. It's just backwards. Okay. I, I can I can deal with just backwards because at least now I know how or where I can exactly park that. Okay, sweet. So yeah, now I can just go under here, basically, uh, and go upside down and park it just where I feel it should be, uh, should be rather safe. A little awkward, obviously, uh, being slightly inverted controls. Not all of the controls are inverted, which is making my mind go all confused. Uh, so here we go, just under here, like so. And then we'll kind of just uh, touch down rather nicely. Obviously, we want all our landing gear to touch, so we'll do it rather smoothly. There we go. Or locked in. Let me just go back a little bit here. There we go. Locked in. Dampeners off. And we are released. Okay, so everything should be fine now. Let me just make sure Kara and the longsword don't have their dampeners on, just for safety reasons. And hopefully this one won't kick me off the edge now when I try to get inside of it. Uh, here we go. And dampeners are off. Let me actually... No, I think we'll be fine for the most part. Okay, sweet. So yeah, let's head back. Let's put a our second Stargate at the, uh, at the outpost over there. So I'll fast forward, obviously, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay, so here we are. I think that was a rather nice landing, at least hopefully I think so. Hey, close enough anyways. So I thought I should say a few things as well. I tried to keep the camera as steady as I could uh, after a little while during that uh, flight, so it kind of would look like I was kind of warping here. I don't know really how that would turn up in video editing. But I've also added quite a few more ships to the uh, exploration thing basically. So I, w I w went on the workshop for a bit and I kind of should jump up here. Uh oh. Um. Hang on, I think that might be just because the gravity is a little too light, oddly enough. <clears throat> it seems to affect things really weirdly, like you can't jump as high. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I don't know how, I don't know why gravity works like that. It's just like you don't get the push that you need to get off the ground too much. Um, but yeah, I added a few more ships to the spawn here. Uh, let me get the Nakoda required, as well as a few interior players. I can't exactly remember what the gate requires now. I know it requires a bit of things, but I'm not exactly entirely too sure what it, what it really needs. So we grabbed a few things over here, let's go back and let's uh, try building it. So where would I have a gate? I was thinking of down in the main room, but uh, I think I'll have it outside just so we can actually transport uh, ships if we need to. So somewhere just around here I think should be rather fine. Let me, uh, do I have a gate? I do have a gate down here. Let me go with the Atlantis gate. The, I, I admit the Atlantis gate is probably my favorite gate. So uh, here we go, that there. We need a power cell. I don't know if we have one of them, but we now need just motor, uh, 20 more construction components, and a power cell. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard to do anyways. So yeah, uh, two motor and a power cell. I think I may have brought some with me. Did I? No, that's medical supplies. Uh, okay, so we don't have any power cells. Let me just quickly do a search for it. No, nothing to power supply. Okay, no biggie. We can uh, we can hopefully gate back to get that. But uh, we need, what do we need a few more of? Two more of them. I think we needed, well not a hundred of them, but we needed some of them anyway. Let me come back here. Uh, build this up. Yeah, and now we just need one more power cell. Okay, sweet. So that turned out rather nicely, I think. Let me put all this back in here. And we'll, uh, we'll use the gate to go back home. Let me quickly save just in case everything starts to mess up again. Yeah, hopefully it shouldn't do. Uh, saved. Okay, sweet. So let me dial up the gate here. Chevron 7 is locked. Let's go through the gate. And here we are at Primeters. Sweet. Okay, so power cell. Do we have one? Let me quickly search. 
power set. Oh, hang on. Yes, indeed we do. Let me take, not 85, let me just take, say 20 with us. Just for safekeeping, just in case we feel like building any other gates anywhere else. Uh, now this should be tied back to the Phoenix. Very sweet. And Chevron 7 locked, and now we can travel back through the gate. To the Phoenix. Yay! Okay, everything's working out rather nicely so far this series. Or at least this episode. Unlike the others I've done. I just realized I kind of need a DHD to dial the gate. Um, how much is required to build the DHD? I actually kind of forgot. I should build the other DHD. The um, if I go to the Stargate section here, now we do have we do have three DHDs we can use. Now I did say you can use a button panel, but you do need the button panel so you control a DHD. Uh, for for the most part anyway, because the DHD is what gives the gate the address. Now, I think these all require the same things. Power cell, power cell. No, that one doesn't require power cell. Okay, we'll go with this one then. Even though we do have power cells on us, but uh, we won't be using it. So we get 40 steel plates, 8 interior plates. Let me grab those real quick. Put these uh, put these in here for safekeeping. So, 40 of you. Uh, how much of the other was it that required? Let's just go here and look. 40, 8, 27. 40. Uh, I hate it when you can't... What? No, don't give me that. I want this. What? You guys can see I'm clearly... There we go. I hate it when the game does it. It sometimes thinks you're clicking on something other than what you're actually clicking on. And it annoys me to high hell because I don't know why it feels the need to do that. Uh, 24 display and 16 computer. 24... I got 22 display. Um, grab them right now. And I'll have to go back and grab some more displays then. No biggie. And we'll put you, put you somewhere safe, just over here, out of the road. Good enough to dial the gate though. So here we go. Uh, no, that, that shouldn't. No, I, I don't. I don't think I can use it in its current state. Else, I would have used the. Uh, would have used this transfer. Actually, could I use that? Hang on. Can I? Where's the terminal I can actually access? By the way, I do want to turn this thing's gravity on because I think this will help me out a, a lot. Gravity generator. Uh, it is on. Strange. It says the gravity is on. I don't notice it on. Oh, because I I know I know the Phoenix's gravity is on, but you think this one here would turn on? Try that one more time. Hang on. Gravity. Uh, on, on. But that one's not on. Is it because of the power? Oh, because I turned the whole station off, didn't I? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I forgot the fact that when I left here, for safekeeping, I turned its actual reactors off. Uh, again, just so I wouldn't have to worry about anything too, uh, too spectacular. What I was going to do, uh, since this isn't actually complete, I can still rename this. So, it might be sketchy, but it might still work. So if I go Primitus here, it's incomplete, but I can still do it. And now this gate shall be called, how does this, Outpost, Outpost A, for Outpost Alpha. Now, what I'm thinking is if I can manually activate the gate using a, not using a DHD, just activating it here. I think this should call upon it. No, it doesn't. Oh, I was really hoping that would actually work. Okay. Hang on. Oh, it is working. So I just didn't get the sounds. Right. Sorry, you need the uh you need gravel to make the sounds and to make the irises or shields uh on the actual gates themselves. So that was outpost A and we need displays. Okay. Um here we go. Well, we might as well grab. Well, yeah, might as well grab 100, uh, so we can actually just save some back with us here. And let me just dial to outpost A. There we go. Chevron locked, and now we can go through. I love how I kind of automatically stand back from the gate when it's making that sound, just because I instinctively think of the uh, the splash and everything, even though it's not there. 
but uh, still. This is incoming wormhole simply because the wormhole is open, but when the wormhole closes we should be okay. Now I will put some gravel inside of that, even though it's not really necessary, but for the sound reasons, and I did take a fair amount of gravel with me uh, simply for this reason. You don't need too much, I think it's only consumed when something actually damages the gate. And this gate is still open, why? Maybe it's a... Uh... okay hang on. I think it's still open because they built the thing when, it's, when it was still powered, so... We'll turn this off and we should be okay. There we go. Okay, uh, what I was going to do, yeah, put this inside of here. Now hopefully, this isn't the moment where the gates start messing up and Primetus is still active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial to Primetus and it says incoming. This is what happens uh, every now and then. This is the bug I was talking to you guys about. This only happens in survival. In creative, it is perfectly a-okay. But uh, now the only thing I can do is, well... I can't really disconnect the gate because if I any attempt of actually closing it down won't work because it's it's an incoming wormhole and if you have ever seen the Stargate, uh, you can't close down an incoming wormhole. You can only close down an outgoing one unless obviously you destroy the gate like I just did. Uh, but that doesn't always work because if I dial again, ah, oh, it worked this time. Sweet. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the gate at Prometheus wasn't stuck open, which it was at least kind of. So now this should turn off, and we'll dial back to the Phoenix, because we don't necessarily need to go to the outpost just yet, but the outpost will provide us with uh, resources, if we do ever need to actually go here for them. So there we go. Again, I'm waiting for it, and I don't need to. Hello there. I went right to the front here. Uh, surprise, surprise. But, uh, okay, so yeah, that's that done. We now have a Stargate down here, which I think looks pretty damn cool. Actually, you know what, I'm going to build a light, because I like having the Stargate lit up. I kind of wish the Stargate has natural uh, illumination, but it doesn't, and that's kind of that, that I really dislike. Because you think about it, it's it's an event horizon, so it should be emitting its own light. Well, I mean, let alone these uh, on the edge here, the Chevron should actually be emitting their own light as well, but they don't. But no biggie, we'll put a few lights around here just to kind of emulate uh, emulate a little bit of light. So let's go back over here, grab out some basic lights. I'll just stick them here to just kind of light it up a little, just to make it look a little nicer. And that way we don't need to shine uh, our lights on it to actually illuminate the gate. Pretty basic stuff, not really necessary, but again, I just wanted to get that out of the road. So these ones are the ones I put over here. Yeah, they are. Okay, and we'll get them a little, little tint of blue. I think. Like that. Not too much, but enough, because now when I dial the gate, you can see it's rather nicely nicely illuminated, and that's what I would prefer instead of having these lights off. But so we don't need this gate open, so we'll turn you off for the most part. And uh, I think we'll leave the station now. We don't really need to be here anymore. But we can come here again for any of the resources that may be within its uh, asteroid-like surface. And hopefully, before, the, before we end this episode, we might find another ship that we haven't actually come across yet. Because again, I have added a whole bunch of new ships. Even though we have quite a few with us already. And actually, this would be an alright opportunity to send one of the ships back home, if we couldn't already have done that. Uh, who would want to go home? Can you fit through the gate? Because, I mean... We have a, a ship already. I, I much prefer the Longsword. And we already have the Assault Raven anyway for exploration. This would free up space for a, another, another future ship. So let me just quickly see if you are able to actually fit through a gate. Because if so, I can take you to Primetus and actually just kind of leave you there, hopefully without destroying anything. Let me just quickly go up here and just test the waters a little bit with your size. Ah, no. <laughs> I... yeah, maybe not. Unless the Stargate kind of glitches out, but there's no way I'll be able to teleport you through the Stargate. So, I guess you're coming with me for now. That or I could leave it here until it's necessary, but I don't know when that would actually be... So yeah, we'll take this with us for now. We don't, again, don't really have to worry about it so much. Because we can just kind of park it just up here. And everything will be rather fine and dandy. So there you go, touchdown. Or we take you around the right way. Up a little, lock you in. Is it locked in? No, it wasn't. It made the sound. But uh, dampeners off. And we can get out. Oh, scared me. We are gay. We, we are A-OK. -okay. And uh, everything else is fine, I think. Yeah, everything else is fine. Uh, yeah, we should be heading off now. 
So, see you later, Outpost Alpha. Thank you for being ever so kind to let us use your services. Also, did I put the gravel inside of it? Yeah, I did. Okay, sweet. So, put this away, and let's head back out on our journey. Back and away ever so slightly here. And once we get up enough, enough speed without burning everything, we'll then head off in our direction that we were originally headed. Actually, what I haven't done is actually done another scan. I don't think anything special will pop up, even though I have seen a few items when we last did a scan here. But uh, that's 27k and 30k, uh, 30k away in the direction of... They're both kind of... Well, one's kind of behind us-ish, back the way we came. And one is downwards and to the front by about 30 degrees. Should we go see that one? Where is that? That's downwards in about that way. About 30k away. Don't necessarily think it's the worst thing to go have a look for. Sure, we might as well take a quick detour and hope that it is something, something good. What I wouldn't mind doing is building a Stargate on the outside of the Phoenix simply for the ability to transport ships through said Stargate. Even though a lot of the ships I've come across are a little bit too big to actually fit through a Stargate. So let me quickly scan again and make sure we've lined ourselves up or make sure we can line ourselves up here. Uh, we were close enough. Uh, backwards 7 degrees and elevation negative 17. So that there. Right about that there I think. Yeah, that is A-OK. -okay. So let's dampen us on and throttle forward and hopefully keep ourselves lined up and we'll give ourselves enough speed. And I'll see you guys once we go and see exactly what this is. You guys won't believe how close I just was to hitting an asteroid then. I didn't notice it till the last second, or I didn't notice how close I was lined up to it. Damn. <laughs> oh, living life a little bit too risky, I think. But, um, I did catch a glimpse of the ship. Don't know what it is, though. I just saw it for a brief moment as I was trying to avoid, uh, avoid dying here. <laughs> So where, where exactly is it? I think it's negative 7 degrees and negative 20. So somewhere over here, maybe that right there? That doesn't really feel... Oh no, that, that is it, apparently it. Okay, let's go check it out then. Then we don't have to worry about hitting any other asteroids here. Lucky me. So what exactly... What exactly are you? Again, I didn't really, ha I didn't really have a chance to catch much of a glimpse of it the first time round, as I was again trying to avoid <laughs> that damned, that damned asteroid. So here we go. This is the other ship. I have not seen this one before, actually. What is this? Camera, don't snap back. I was looking at that. Thank you very much. That actually looks kind of cool. I'm gonna, ha I'm definitely gonna have to have a look at that one. Okay, so let me get out of here. Uh, let me use Kara to get up to it. I'll turn it back on and then I'll try to reposition it in a way where I can easily get in and out of it. So, Kara, can you please uh, please help me out here real quick? Obviously, we don't want to hit it either. Let me actually quickly take a, take a look at this thing as we fly around it. So, it seems to have gimbaled weapons of some nature. Maybe. Maybe they're gimbaled? Or maybe they're not. They could just be connected and slightly exposed. I just thought by its appearance it looked like they would be gimbaled, but no, they appear to be stationary uh, stationary weapons on the outside there. Uh, this is the underside, with a few landing gear. It also has a... I don't know what that is in the middle there. That row of... Um, that row of something. Oh, that's rocket pods? Oh, this thing has a ton of rocket pods down below. Has a camera on the front? 
It has a uh, antenna on top, which is nice. This thing might actually be controllable. Also has a merge block and a connector. At least I think it has a connector on the bottom side as well. So this might be one of the new ships I actually added uh, today when looking on the workshop. So yeah, it does have two connectors here. Rather nice, actually. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, turn off the gravity on the Phoenix and get out of it, get out of here right now. And hopefully that will allow me to park it on top of the top of my ship and we'll be fine. Okay, so um, Phoenix gravity off for just one second here. Now I have to get close enough, obviously. Get out and let's get in. So, what are you called before I turn you off? You are called the Pitbull Bomber. And I can't read what language that is. Is it the first not Scandinavian, is it? I don't know why that came to my mind. But, uh... This is the Gatlin Turrets, and that is the... I'm guessing the Missile Pods, if I scroll all the way down here. Yes, it is. Okay, then. That is kind of cool, and that is apparently what the thrusters are called. Uh... Nice! I kind of like this. Do you have a remote control, by the way? And hang on, I just noticed something called ejector. Oh, yeah, c sorry. I was thinking, for whatever reason, the cockpit will eject. Uh, yeah, do you have a remote control block? Yes, you do. This is cool. Let me claim this real quick. And now we should be able to access the remote control once the ship is turned on. So let's get, let's look at this turning on in third person, shall we? This is a really good looking ship, though. I actually really like it. That's uh Oh there we go. That is cool. This this is definitely oh wow, it's got uh it lights up its own guns. I don't know the purpose of that other than just looking bad archery. But uh <laughs> That is that is one cool looking ship. So yeah. Uh let me let me take this back around. Actually let me we might as well take it for a test flight since we are right here basically with it. So let's uh let's see how this thing performs. I wanna take this with me, but I'm not entirely too sure how far I'll get with this, to be quite honest. But uh, anyway, let's turn the HUD on here. It does overload, so I might have to check whether or not it's using batteries or not. It might actually be using batteries over the reactors here. No, they are all powered, but they might not have... Not, blah, 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 blah. They might not have any... Here we go. Let me put that inside the... I can't put that inside the large reactor? Ah, interesting of a thing to do. I guess that means you'll have to power it up yourself then. So yeah, definitely no way to change them around unless these are not using a phase system, which they should be. But yeah, so this overloads because it's only using a small reactor as opposed to two large ones. I guess the easiest thing to do would be to empty out its um, empty out small reactor, put everything in the large ones and fly around with it like that. But nonetheless though, this is actually a really nice looking ship. So we're going to... Um, where should we park this? We really have no space. The only place I can think of parking it is on the underside of the um, underside of the ramp here, basically right in front of the assault raven. Great looking ship, though. Actually, no, we have a lot of room on the back here, uh, so this is where I'll be parking it then. Somewhere around about here-ish. Again, really nice looking ship. Whoever made this, by the way, great looking ship. <laughs> this will just be a series of me finding people's ships and just complimenting them on how they, how awesome they look. I wonder if the person who made these ships... I wonder if anyone who made any of these ships uh, watched my videos. I think that'd be kind of cool. So, uh, just go down rather gently here. From this angle, it kind of reminds me of the Firefly. Oh, sorry, Serenity, but which is a Firefly. Can we not go down any further? We can, there we go. Just want to get all these locked in. There we go. Lock. Just want to make sure we don't cause any of any movement on the ship here. This does seem to lock in in a really weird way, and I'm kind of afraid about that. Not really liking that, but... I think that's just simply because of the connector it has on it, which is actually kind of pushing against the ship here. We'll turn dampeners off, and uh, we'll come get Kara to... Come pick me up here. So, can I access your... Let's turn this on. Turn the broadcasting all the way down to none. Oh wait, I can't connect if I do that. I'm an idiot. I'll turn, it, turn it back up for a second, so I can gain access to Kara. Wait, I can't gain... I thought using the antenna I could. Let's 
strange. Car remote access. So I can do it. Okay. Strange. Um, it wasn't giving me the option to click on car from the top of it though, which again was rather weird. But uh, nonetheless, we'll get around here, and uh, we got in from the from this side over here, I think. So go to this camera view here. We should be able to get Kara to come around, and I could probably just get out and control her anyways. But uh, let's get out here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to do another situation of getting Kara to come around. That aura can turn on the gravity, but I'm a little lazy, and we might as well just do it this way instead. So, uh, come around this way. And I think, yeah, okay, we work on the right way. I wasn't entirely too sure about that. But uh, nonetheless, we have it. We, we are good to go. And back around here and down like so. Very nice. And let's get inside the seat. And let's go back inside the Phoenix. Again, very nice looking ship. I really do like that one. It's quite large compared to all the other ships I've got so far. But, um... I do definitely like that. I might have to take that... I don't, I don't know what to do with all the... I, I can't just keep collecting ships. I have to do something with these ships I have collected thus far. I do have an idea that I want to do, and that is uh, either one, connect all the Stargate bases I've found so far into one, which is one idea, or the second idea of... Why are you angled really weirdly? Are you actually angled weirdly? No, I'm the one angled weirdly. Okay. Um, yeah, can I fill the things together and make that into one massive ship? Or I can make the Phoenix into a massive, massive ship. I'm not too sure on which exactly of the, of the two to do. And I kind of did this wrong. Okay. Oh, that was close. That was really, 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 really close. I'm not going to think about that anymore before getting inside the safety of my ship. So yeah, let me know what you guys think I should do. Should I convert the Phoenix over into a large ship? And the, the way I would kind of do this is I would use this as the top front of the ship. So I would extend it downwards probably by another like level or so. And I would extend it backwards by quite a distance. So I can actually store all the ships in the bottom side and have all the essential components on the top side. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will see you guys next time. So, thank you guys for watching, and stay awesome, everyone.